very good afternoon to all of you. As Madam has already introduced me to you, I am working as a faculty in VPM's Polytechnic and I am in the engineering education field since last 21 years and also pursuing my PhD in educational department and taking the virtual laboratories as my topic of research. So as a teacher at the degree and diploma level, I, I found that the students are not able to understand the concepts of programming and they are not also able to take decision on the various constructs to be used when faced with a real life problem. Many times also I have found that they just mug up the programs just to pass in the final examinations. So this is a big problem ahead of me and I wanted really to help the students in finding out a solution to understand the concepts and actually write the programs themselves. So the students after learning the theory, they perform the practicals in the labs and what I found is that there is a need for self-learning instructional material and especially for the students who are weak in the programming concepts. So the solution that I proposed was to, plan, uh, to use a technology enhanced instruction material that is TEL and use the virtual labs for making the students understand the concepts and also help them make the decisions on the use of proper concepts for a particular application. So the student should understand the concept, the lab work is needed for the practice and then they need self-placed learning and the extra practice. So what I propose is, my idea is to use the virtual labs. So what are virtual labs? These are the labs which have been developed under the NME ICT project of MHRD by various IITs and NITs. So I started browsing through these website and searching for a virtual lab suitable for taking care of this particular problem. And I found this computer programming lab developed by IIIT Hyderabad. So what the teacher is supposed to do, uh, what, what the teacher will do is select the topic which the students find difficult to understand, find a virtual lab suitable for the topic, then check for the correctness of the lab. Of course, here we have to see here the labs have been developed by the domain experts. So we are at peace that they have, they are the correct labs. Only they should match the objectives that we have decided upon. Then also we need to find out if the students are ready to use these labs. Only then we can be assured that the strategy is going to work. And what the students will do? The students will carry out the experiments using the virtual labs. So before actually designing my study or actually carrying out my experiment, I had to position my work. So I did a comprehensive literature survey wherein I found what existed was that the virtual labs have been used in the teaching learning process in other countries and there most of the studies are based on the attractiveness of these labs. That is whether the students like the virtual labs, are they motivated in using the virtual labs. So lot of papers I got, they are pointing out to this. So what I found was missing is whether the students really learn using these virtual labs, whether these are really effective in the learning process. So the gap that I found is that how the faculty can effectively use these virtual labs in their teaching. So there is a need for providing the guidelines to the faculty who wish to integrate these new technology labs in improving the student learning. So my focus is on this. So the research questions that I tried to answer was, can the virtual lab help low performance more in understanding the concepts in programming than the high performers? Can the virtual labs help students take decisions on the use of the control flow constructs suitable for a particular application? Then I decided on the learning objectives. So the three learning objectives that I selected was 
to learn how decision making is done while programming, to learn about the various simple constructs and the advanced constructs used in the control flow like the for loop, if else, switch case and so on. So, in order to find out whether my idea is working, I design my study. So, for that I selected the virtual lab developed by IIIT. Then the topic that I selected was the basic and advanced flow control. The participants were second year undergraduates from industrial electronics branch from a self finance engineering institute. The sample size 54 and the research design that I selected was one group pre-test post test because here I wanted to find out if the virtual lab is going to help the students who are performing low in than the students who are performing higher. And the measurement tool that I used is the pre-test and the post-test marks and I am going to find out the difference in the marks and the number of questions in each of the test were 20. So, the implementation process was I covered the concepts in the theory class and then appraised the students about the lab related activities. Then the students perform the experiment in the traditional lab. So, the one which we have been using since long time. Then I conducted a pretest of all the students just to find out the difference or just to find out whether they have been able to understand the concepts and they are able to apply or they are able to take a decision on the constructs. And then I made the students perform the experiment using virtual labs. So, here I would like to show you a small movie wherein I would like to like you to find out what exactly is the difference. So, this is the physical lab environment that usually the students work with and then the virtual lab environment. So, this is the computer programming lab. Then, so I want you to see carefully each slide and just find out what is the difference and then I will try to make out the difference. Okay, so, this is what the students go through. This is the experience that they have when they work in the virtual labs. So, as Madhuri has also pointed out in the earlier uh, session that what exactly helps are the visualizations, the scaffolding. So, you can see this same is present in the virtual lab environment also. In the physical lab environment, these are not present. When the student write the program, they just have to remember it they just maybe they write it in their notebook and then write the program here. Here what is done is basically the concept or the idea is to make the students understand the logic and not the syntax. Whereas, when they work in the physical lab what I have observed is that they are more you know worried about whether my syntax is correct, whether I put a colon, whether I put a brace and so on. Whereas, here the program is given and they are they have to go through the program step by step there is the output which is shown and then also the variables that are displayed at one side you can see here. Okay, so, this actually this basically we when we do in the word physical what we do is we put this in our mind. Whereas, here when they actually see the value of the variables changing at each and every step of the execution of the program they are able to understand exactly what happens behind the scene when the program is getting executed. So, I hope you are able to make out the difference of the physical and the virtual lab environment. And then I conducted a post test. After they had gone not only one lab, I made them go through two or four, uh, three experiments and then immediately I took a conducted a post test. What I had to worry about, see before conducting this experiment what all things were 
important necessary was how did I select the students? Naturally, as I was finding out that the students were finding difficult in understanding the concepts, all my students I selected as the samples. Then what measure did what did I measure to show that my idea is working as I found out the difference in the pre-test and the post-test marks. So what did I measure to show that my idea works? First I carried out a pre-test. Then based on the pre-test marks what I did was I divided the students into two categories. Those who have scored less than 7 that is 40 percent that is what we call as a passing percentage in engineering. So those I said that they were the low performance and the high and the students with marks greater than 7 as the high performance. Then I uh, calculated the difference in the between the pre-test and the post-test marks. And the analysis of the <coughs> results I carried out using the pair sample test for the pre-test and post-test of all the students. This was to find out or find out answer to my first question that is whether the students are able to understand the concepts, whether all the students are able to understand the concepts and then this is pair sample test for between the low and the high performance again between pre-test and the post-test. So this particular I carried out to find out whether the difference between the pre-test and post-test is more for the low performance than the high performance and I was very happy to find out the results. Okay, the next thing that I had to look out was the validity, whether the content that is am I really using the labs matching my objectives. Naturally the labs have been developed by the experts and the objectives have been clearly mentioned at the start of the virtual lab. So if this is not there, like if the content is not valid then naturally my results are not acceptable. Secondly, about the instruments, I have used the pre-test and the post-test. So are the pre-test and post-test questions really testing what I wish to? Okay. So the tests were shown to the domain experts. I showed the pre-test and the post-test questions to my colleagues. Then if the tests, again here if the tests are not valid then naturally the results are not justified. And the third important thing is equivalence of the two tests. So if one test is at a higher difficulty level than the other or whether both the tests are at the same level. This again I did by getting a feedback from my, from the domain experts who have been teaching programming along with me in my institute. So if the tests are not equivalent again the, the, then the claim that the virtual labs help low performance performers than the high again is false. So the results as I have put it on in this graph you can see the students who had scored below 7 the difference in the marks is larger than the students who had scored higher in the first test. So again the statistical results. So what I found is that there is a statistically dif uh, significant difference between the pre-test and the post-test scores of all the students taken together. So what it means that, so what I can infer from this that the virtual labs are effective in developing the selected learning objectives. Second, the difference between the pre-test and post-test marks of the low and the high performers. So here I found that there is a statistically significant difference between the pre-test and post-test marks of the low performers whereas it is not so for the high performance. Although there is a difference, it is not statistically significant. So what I can in, uh, conclude from this that the virtual lab treatment helps the low performers more than the high performers. So I was very happy to get these results because these are the students about whom I always used to worry that they are not able to understand. So when I put the visualizations in front of me, front of them, they were like very happy to see and they said that now we have really understood the concept, what exactly happens, how the for loop works, how the switch case works, what happens to the variables. So finally, uh, did my idea really work? So what I, my idea was using a technology enhanced learning that is a virtual labs. So my research question were whether the students can understand the concepts using the virtual labs 
and whether the students can make the proper decisions regarding the use of the various constructs. So, the results show that I can claim that the post test scores is higher than pre test. So, they have understood the concepts and the low performers have shown better results than the high performers. So, my idea I can say it has worked. Big thank you to all of you. These are the acknowledgements. Okay.